Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's had a great hump day. You're now over the hump. Uh, tomorrow's already Thursday, Thursday, and we've got games going on, and then it's the weekend up and coming. So time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future so to speak so <clears throat> i wanted to go ahead i had a conversation forgive me my shirt's covered with dust and stuff and out working in the workshop got glue and epoxy resin and everything else on me because we're working on getting some stuff for you guys okay because i'm burning i'm burning i'm burning for you but i was talking to my buddy brother Roz, okay the professor Roz is great because Roz is that analyst that has all the numbers and things. You know, I believe in things, you know, but I don't necessarily have the numbers to back it up per se. And dealing with Roz, Roz is being able to actually go through, get the numbers for me and get it all straightened out to, you know, see if what I'm thinking is right or not. One of the things that we've heard all off season, and we don't know how this season is going to go is that the Joneses don't care about winning, that the Joneses, you know, literally are just penny pinching. They have deconstructed the team by letting Lyle Collins go and Connor Williams going. You know, the offensive line is just in shambles because of that, that you let Amari Cooper go, you know, one of the best route runners out there, and you can't replace that kind of a guy. And then there was the whole Randy Gregory situation, and how could you not pay him? And it's the debacle. But is it really as bad as they say? Now, understand this. It's hard to compare what players are doing in different systems and versus different teams, okay? The Cowboys have played Tampa Bay, which, you know, is good, and they look like their defense is really, really good. And then they played Cincinnati. We really don't know if Cincinnati is actually a good team or not. Um, they may be that team that's a Super Bowl hangover, and it may end up being that they're below 500. We don't know. So it's a little hard to go ahead and judge exactly what they're doing against other opponents. But if we're just starting to look at some of the raw data and things like that, where the guys we let go, are they making major differences? Are they doing better than what the players that we have? And I want to do this comparison because I, I was sitting here thinking about how Tyler Smith um, graded out as the best rookie offensive tackle this past week. We go against um, the the. Uh, Giants with Evan Evan Neal this weekend, who was a much higher draft pick, who is not rating out anywhere close to what um, Tyler Smith is doing. And so I started thinking, how are the other guys that we let go doing? And so the first thing is I got talking to Brother Roz, and we started crunching the numbers. And we've seen up close what Lyle Collins is doing, because technically, the reason why we let go out of uh, Lyle Collins won his $13 million salary, but second, because we had uh, Terrence Steele, who was taking over for his place. So let's go ahead and look here. Let's, let's take, take the chart right here, okay? We got Lyle Collins, of course, on Cincinnati, and Terrence Steele over here, and let's look at the numbers here. So with Lyle Collins, He's had 169 snaps, which is uh, the, the most snaps of any offensive lineman, and versus 130 for um, Terrence Steele. Now, penalty-wise, uh, we, we, of course, Terrence Steele has been terrible. He's got four penalties that first game. That first game was horrendous. Two only one for Lyle Collins, but Lyle Collins has one sack, and um, – of course, Terrence still hasn't given up a sack. But look at the numbers down here, guys. The numbers overall grade a 61.6 for Lyle Collins. Terrence Steele is a 73. Pass blocking a 43.3 versus 76.9. 83.4 uh, run blocking, and Terrence Steele is slightly behind him. So looking at that... You look at those numbers and you say, oh, okay, we didn't lose anything. We didn't lose anything on that deal. I mean, the only place you look and say it was those four penalties the first week, none the second week. But, you know, he's not giving up sacks and pressures like 
Lyle Collins. So right now, two games in, we have to say, okay, that wasn't a mistake. Then we have Connor Williams, who went to Miami and became a center, um, versus Tyler Biotish. Okay, so let's look at the numbers here for those two. All right, so Connor Williams, um, 131 snaps. <laughs> Amazingly, 130 for Biotish. Okay. Penalties, they both have one. Neither of them have given up a sack. And so as we look at this, grade-wise, you've got Connor Williams with a 68.7 and overall a 67.1. Uh, pass blocking, believe it or not, uh, Biotish is 27 points higher than Connor Williams. Uh, Connor Williams is a better run blocker, so you could basically say, okay. We didn't lose on that one either. So Connor Williams isn't setting the world on fire. Him and Biotis are about equal. One's better at pass blocking. One's better at running the football. So, okay. So that narrative that we've gotten already that, you know, the Cowboys screwed up by letting Lyle Collins and Connor Williams go. Did they? I don't know. Okay. Let's go to one more stat here. Edge rushing. Okay, Let, let's go through here. Boom. Okay, we have Randy, Randy, Randy Gregory, who has um, three solo tackles to Dorrance Armstrong's four, has one sack to Dorrance Armstrong's two. And uh, Dorrance Armstrong has played a few more, uh, I'm sorry, has hit more solo tackles. Um, I don't know if Ross has, let's see the breakdown here. When you look at it here, Randy Gregory is a little bit better than Dorrance Armstrong, but not by much. And here's the other thing you have to also understand is um, the other part of the equation is Dorrance Armstrong is also splitting time with Dante Fowler. And Dante Fowler, I don't have all of his stats, but I know Dante has had another sack. The main spot where you look at here where Randy Gregory has been better was he had two forced fumbles the first week. But beyond that, you could say, okay, Randy Gregory was slightly better than Dorrance Armstrong, right? Okay, so, hmm, but not a major difference. And again, I think when it's all said and done, it's going to end up being because the Cowboys are doing it by committee, they're going to end up having numbers that are going to be far and away better than what Randy Gregory will have. And one final note here, this one is kind of a surprise, and I want to do this one. Because this one is Amari Cooper and Dorrance Armstrong. And I don't have the names up here because I want you to try and figure out who's who. Take a good look at this. Amari Cooper. I'm sorry. I said Dorrance Armstrong. I meant Noah Brown. Forgive me. That chip is still burning my brain. Look at those numbers. Amari Cooper. And Noah Brown. One has 16 targets, 12 reception. The other one has 14 targets, 10 reception. One has 118 yards. One has 159 yards. They both have one TD. Neither of them have drops. One has 9.8 yards per reception. The other one has 15.9 uh, yards after reception. 1.8 for one guy. 3.9 quarterback rating when targeted for one is 90.1 and for the other is 103 so with the real Amari Cooper please stand up have you figured it out yet do you know which is which Noah Brown was the one on the right Noah Brown, believe it or not, as bad as week one was, had 14 targets, came down with 10 of them, had 15, 159 yards in receiving, one touchdown, averaged 15.9 yards per reception, and 3.9 yards after a catch, and a 103 win rated, rating for the quarterback when targeted. So... Back to the original question. Do the Dallas Cowboys care? Does Jerry and Stephen Jones care about winning? Or do they just care about the money? 
Things can change. It's a long season, and this is a small sample size. But quite frankly, the moves that they made, they're not necessarily hurting them right now. And you can also look and say, we lost Tyron Smith, but I dare say we're in better position now with Tyron Smith being out than we were when we took Terrence Steele and moved him over. Or when we played Ty Naseki or, uh, or Chaz Green. I know the experts say that the Cowboys, that, you know, they're the worst team in the division and they're not a top 20 team. I think they're actually going to be wrong and they're going to be eating some crow. And this whole narrative about, you know, all the guys we let go, they're not raising any cane where they're at. So with that being said, hopefully I got you a little bit more knowledge uh, and ammunition to fight the uh, trolls and everything else and a better understanding what's really going on as opposed to the narrative that's put out there. I'm Mark Holmes, and, well, you know how we roll. I I've got Philly 500 saying we're pretty quiet around here. You know what? Don't believe the hype. I'm Mark Holmes, and I'll see you soon.